flash in it. <laughs> Zucchini. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're at the tougher part where you're running through the uh, skins for the last time. Look at you! <laughs> Yay! You having fun? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. They were following you. So I put these guys in the pen because Curly, the cat, went after them. And, of course, I was there, so I stopped it. But I can't trust not being out here. Um, they just went for a swim in the pool. Gave them some new water in here. So this is the first time that they're in this pen. But it's really big. So it's a plenty of room for them to move around and do stuff. Um, yeah. So they just can't forage and eat grass, which will make sure we come out here so they can do that a little later. Yeah, we're not eating. It's It's, it's hot. So they're just, they're just some relaxing. Oh, these beetles, they keep flying around me. Oh, hello. Hello. And then the little guys are still doing good out here. They were just <laughs> going, are you hanging out in the feed dish? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. I you know you want to come out, don't you? Hold on. Come on, kitty. Come on. You're, I know you're not. The food's not in there. Come on. Let's go this way. Come on. Psst, let's go in the barn. Come on in the barn. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna feed him in here. It's gonna get dark as the uh, locking the goats out. All right, Curly's fed, and he'll stay in here. This is where he usually just sleeps all day long. And that way he can't go after the goslings when I let them out. All right, bye, buddy. You'll be fine. So for the most part, um, Curly just likes to stay in the barn. He just, I don't know why he was out. I guess maybe I hadn't fed him yet, so he was out. Anyways, so when I ran him off after chasing the goslings, I realized we probably shouldn't have done that because I couldn't lock him in the barn. So now he's locked in the barn. And um, he'll be fine. I let him out. He hunts and does his thing at night, usually. Hi. Yes, I'm going to empty, clean out your pool. Okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, isn't that better? Now I gotta go turn off the water. Yeah. They love when it's full and especially when it's clean. Oh, they just love it. <laughs> they just I wish I had a bigger pool for you so you could do that more. They want to like go far and splash in it. <laughs> oh my goodness. If they ever figured out how to get in there, I'd be doomed. But they would love it. <laughs> you proud, Daddy? Yep, there's his chick. There's Mama right over there. She does a great job. All right, so Liam was right. They only know how to get up in here and get food. I was telling we needed. I was telling him we needed to leave food still out um, in their old little grow out coop because they didn't know where the food was and he kept insisting they did know and I said until I see it I won't know I can't I know it's warm isn't it huh buddy that's our rooster Brahma rooster that we got and these are the female Brahmas there they are there's okay they have an egg that's supposed to hatch today um and then one that's supposed to hatch in a couple days but we'll see if it actually happens. I candled them and there's the one looked like it had stopped developing and then the other one um, looks close. So I don't know which egg was which.
they were put in a couple days apart so we'll see and then the mama that's up here usually that is um snowball she's out right now eating and drinking and her eggs are dud so we're gonna get her some hatching eggs um or fertile eggs so that um whoever doesn't hatch out of here and this one can actually hatch something that's worth hatching also i think we have another um hen that is thinking about getting broody because i keep finding her periodically in with the others so we'll see if she goes broody as well she'll get some eggs once we get them next week so we'll see now that the geese are done taking their bath the ducks came running over they knew they were done and in they go <sighs> I can't get any closer or they will get out, but I can zoom in. <laughs> yeah, three smart ones. Let's see. I wonder if the other two will get, other three will get in. Oh, there we go. We got four in. You got going, Connie? The white one's a female, so we know we can tell her apart. So Liam named her Connie. No, she wants to. She's so close to getting in. Come on, go in, girl. Go on in. I'm going to show you where the goats have been heading out to, which is great. Um, let's see. I can show you where they are because they go pretty far. Oh, yeah, there they are. It's kind of hard to see. Hold on, I'll show you. Okay, so they're, they're over there. And, but Diamond's still pretty close, but she goes out with them typically. A lot of times they like to go way down over there. It's pretty far away from the house, which is good to see them, you know, doing stuff. I think um, Aurora stepped in a fire ant's nest though, because she had a whole bunch of like, I don't know, just, it was all like scabby on her legs. And um, I talked to the vet and he agrees that her would what I was describing of how it looked that, that she probably got into a um, fire ant's nest. So we're treating her for that. Um, but she's already actually looking better today, even before I started anything. And that's what he said would be happening. He's like, if you're already seeing the scabs, then her body is, you know, taking care of it. Um, so that's usually the, the end stage. So hopefully she'll be feeling better and they don't step in any more fire ant's nests. But definitely as a reminder, don't walk out into the field out there without boots on because you just don't know what you might step on. You know those flowers look so pretty. So pretty. So I came across this little bit of white flowering, um, but I wasn't sure what it was. But I, it is Queen, Queen's Anne's Lace. I wanted to make sure it wasn't poison hemlock. I checked it. It has the little hairs. Let me show you here. Oh, if I can get the good. Oh, it's hard to see, but there's little hairs on here, which is an indication that it is Queen's Anne's lace versus poison hemlock, which would be purple and blotchy, I think, and smooth. So this can stay. And I like to leave anything here, especially the flowers, for the pollinators and um, the clover, the bees love the clover. So, and this is good clover for the goats. This is the good clover. White clover, they can't eat. So, this can stay. And a couple of the um, Cayugas got out. So, guess who's in the pool? So, it's hard to see her, but she's there. She's in the pool. <laughs> love how they dry off. 
if she's in there. She's getting her bath. Yeah, we're just yeah, pull them out and then you just take them. We'll throw them to the goats. Yeah, that big one can come off. Yep. I'll call you Alejandro. I will cook you and eat you. Sounds good. Hello. Can you put it in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. And the goats will eat you? Yeah, they can eat that. Mm -hmm. All right, I think there's a couple zucchini I'm going to try and harvest on here. <laughs> a couple really large ones. So we're going to do that. And he's going to pull these up. I'm done with the zucchini because squash or pumpkins are next. So yay. Bye bye. Summer squash. Bye bye zucchini. I just don't want them to encourage the bugs. Plus I'm done with them. Ah, bug in my ear. Yeah. They're mostly done anyway, right? There's not really that many flowers on them. Is that a zucchini? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a large zucchini. There you go. <laughs> now the goats no, go aren't even eating it. Come on, you guys gotta eat these. Yep, the whole plant. It is, it's going. We'll let the goats eat it. Or the chickens, or both. Okay? And then this will make room for the squash. They're looking a lot better now that I treated them. I'll have to look for squash bugs. Oh, okay. Julio's not impressed, but I'm impressed. Look at the size of this. It's, it's really, it's the size of my hand. And whatever this is, I don't know. A couple more that I've I've already picked a couple. Yeah, there you go. Size. I know you're unimpressed. Well, because I'm I believe you do a great job to begin with. Hmm. Brownie point. With me. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, so I just pick them like this. Either the birds eat them, they rot, or. Um, there's a tomato hornworm. There was a tomato hornworm in here. I know I got them, but there could be more. So I just get them when they're just still slightly green. You're doing great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Woo! You got, oh wow, look at you. You got a shirt full. <laughs> she does really good. Helping out. Good job. Thank you, sweetie. Yep, tomatoes are looking good. They'll be right by tomorrow, if not, well, tomorrow the next day. Peppers are looking good. We got tons and tons of cucumbers. Oh, and, look. Def and definitely, uh, look, tomatoes. That's what I said, tomatoes, lots and lots of tomatoes. Still so many green tomatoes. So many green tomatoes still. We picked like all the ones that were just about ripe. So. But mo a lot of these will be turning by tomorrow. So, it's looking good. But I wanted to, to show you something. I can't even find them. There they are. There's a watermelon. And a cantaloupe. I know it's gotten eaten by something, but so far, not all the way through. So, it's a chance. And then there's a few more over here. Watermelon. And watermelon. And I know there's another one somewhere around here, but I can't, they're so camouflaged that it's actually hard to find them when I'm trying to find them. Oh, here it is. Watermelon. I'm not sure what that is. It's some sort of like cantaloupe. So I know I planted some cantaloupes, but I also planted something that was like a melon that's like a cantaloupe. So I'm not sure where they, you know, where they're all growing in here or what's what. So 
pretty cool. It's kind of sad to see the, this was so green and just beautiful to look at, but um, yeah, they were done. Time to take them out. Oh, the dock, so much dock and so much grass. Ooh, but this is gonna be really pretty, I think. Ignore the seven. That's there to treat them as necessary. They've been honking at me nonstop, and then I bring the water out, and they're like all happy. Just standing right here. Just standing here. Did I stop? Hey, no, I had to fill up the bucket. <laughs> you gonna go to the next one now? Yeah, okay, then we go to the other one. Yep, yep. And number three. Why do you have to go put your head in every single one? But unlike ducks, um, geese, they just eat the grass. So they don't put their beaks into the ground making mud. So it's not as big of a deal if they put their heads in it for the goats. This water is actually supposed to be for the goats. Um, it's more of a problem if the ducks get involved. The little pieces of grass here and there won't hurt the goats. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I think he might have to put a little bit more caulk up there. I don't know. Um, but that's in. Looks good. Everything's been painted. And yeah. Looks better in person. <laughs> Just the doors need to be painted here. This door needs to be painted. And then it's move in ready. Very excited. Very, very excited. So we just checked, Elena and I here. And it's still wet. It just hatched. So we're gonna let the mamas keep it warm, okay? And we'll come back and check on it later. Yeah. Okay, that make you happy? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it does sound funny, doesn't it, when you talk and it's bumpy. <laughs> All right. Guess it's time to feed everybody, huh? So this chick has two very overprotective mamas. If I get try and get near them, they will <laughs> show you here. <laughs> she called back me. <laughs> they get real big and this one, woo! She backed me. Thankfully it's not. That's very overprotective mamas. And food and water. Show it where the food and water is, but the mamas are not really letting it get too far away. But it's only 24 hours old, so it'll be fine. It's a hot one, though. I feel bad, but it's good for the chick. The chick's nice and cozy, even when it's not underneath Mama. Mama 1 or Mama 2.
What are you talking about? What? <laughs> getting. Oh, I just popped that one open. Okay. Come on, hurry up. Okay. Where'd the wings go? Liam's favorite time of year, right? Yeah. When you get to make sauce. He loves this part. We're at the tougher part where we're running through the uh, skins for the last time. So it's a little more, more work than the first time through. But it allows for us to get all of that meaty part of the tomato off and leave just the skins and, and the seeds. Uh, seeds. Because we don't like that in our sauce when we make it. Yep. Especially the seeds. Right. Even though I will use the immersion blender to blend up the other parts to it, this makes for a smoother um, sauce that we like. I want to eat it. Get it stuck on my teeth, but I want to eat it. Okay, so I started off with four peppers. I've already done two of them. I chopped them up in my food processor. I'm Since I'm making two separate pots here, I'm trying to make sure I separate the recipe um, so they can cook evenly. Eventually it'll cook down and whatever's in this pot will likely fit in this one, but just to be sure if it doesn't, I have, I'm gonna try and half the recipe putting it in here. So there's two peppers already in here. I'm gonna put two peppers in here. good. I'm going to use my immersion blender, blender later to get them all more finely chopped and make a nice smooth sauce. But this helps to just get them uh, to just cook down easily in the sauce. So I did the same with some onions. I'll scrape that out, put that in here, and then I also put some in here. So moving along. <laughs> Splatting myself. sure this one is just about ready um, I remember that it says when the uh, the tendril closest to the vine and where it's attached when it that starts to die off that means this watermelon's ripe so we'll see if that proves true it's just starting to die off so we'll give it a until it's dead I guess I don't know more tomato harvesting is happening today. I'm not sure I'm going to harvest any more peppers, but I'm going to definitely take a look, see where we're at. Um, we didn't get any real substantial rain, so I don't know that any of the peppers have grown a whole lot um, since, you know, yesterday. But I definitely know I need to pick tomatoes. Um, pumpkins are starting to look good over there. Um, we did take out the squash, so... I'm not sure if I'm going to plant anything here or not. Um, so, yeah. Looking good. We do need to start harvesting the potatoes. It's going to be really hot this week, so I may wait on that. Not sure. Goats are not really convinced that they should be up this early. But it's, it's time to do that. The geese want to join me. Yeah, the two over here and the little goslings over there. Hi, boys. <laughs> they want to come in. So it's a smaller harvest than yesterday, but still a very decent harvest. We got a couple peppers. Um, yeah, a couple peppers, tomatoes, and I, I still pick ones that are like this. Some of them, if they're really bad, I won't. But I think I can cut this off and it'll still be good. And some cucumbers. So not overall not bad. This is actually a yellow tomato. 
So, it's supposed to look that way. And here's another one of those yellow tomatoes. They're my, part of my heirloom tomatoes. This one I actually da accidentally damaged when I got scared by something flying at me. Here's another heirloom tomato. Um, they're very much more susceptible to bugs, it seems like, than the, um, oh, what are they called? Like the hybrids? So, that's frustrating, but that's just part of, just part of it. Okay, so this is the potato bed. This is the first, I don't know, about third of it, I think. And I've been digging them up because they're pretty much, you know, done. So it goes all the way, all the way back there. This is getting to the, the nicer, the thicker ones here. But of the ones I've already dug up, this is what I've got. This is about a half of a five gallon bucket. These are ones I damaged when I was trying to dig them up, whether with my fingernail or the hoe. So we'll use these first. That was like a fingernail, caught that one. Um, I had to throw away a bunch because they would get, they had like bugs in them and all. Some of them are not too bad with the bugs. Oh, that one I caught my fingernail. I guess I should stick that one over there. Yeah, so this like, so I'm not sure how well they're going to store. Or even how good they're going to be inside. There's a bunch of itty bitty little ones. Like even teeny tiny ones like this. But. Yeah. I, I'm actually surprised. I'm really surprised. You helping mommy? Yeah. You doing a great job? Well, maybe I just be on that. Oh no, we can't do that. Um, I don't know where a hole is again. It's right there, sweetie. You can see it. You got stuff in it. You gotta push it. Right there. Good job. Ooh, that's a nice size one. All right, Elena, you want to pull that one there? You got to pull straight up. Some of them are really... You need help? Ooh! Look at that one. Can you show it to Mommy? That's a nice size carrot. Good job.